What's going on, Comic Book Nation? Jim Viscardi here, and today in our studio during Comic Con 2018, I have very special guests. The creative team of DC Comics, Harley Quinn, Sam, the man Humphreys, and John Timms. Guys, welcome. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thanks for it. having us. Uh, this book is a wild ride. It absolutely is. No question about it, yeah. And it's, it's one of those things, when they, when they announced you for Harley, it was one of those things that there's... No, there's nobody better, I think, to get the zaniness. Because you, you've written some, some wild stuff. I've written some wild stuff, for sure. What, yeah, makes, yeah. what makes Harley really different? Uh, Harley's great. You know, it's, it's funny because uh, I did not see the gig coming. Mm -hmm. uh, I, Dan DiDio asked me out to lunch, and in true Dan style, he was like, you, you already know what I'm going to talk to you about. You already know everything. You already know what I was going to say. And I had no clue. <laughs> I thought about a million things, a right. million things that were not what he was going to say. Mm -hmm. And then he said Harley Quinn, and I couldn't believe it. But then... I was like, oh, I did that Bugs Bunny Legion Superhero special mm -hmm. that was well received and it was a blast. I loved writing it. And I was like, that in hindsight was my audition of sorts for Harley Quinn. And it makes sense because Harley is like the Bugs Bunny of the DC universe. Mm -hmm. She can go anywhere in the DC universe. She can talk to any other character. She can fight any villain. And because she's always herself, the other's characters can be always be who they are. Mm. And because we see them through her eyes, we see them in a new light. Mm -hmm. What's it been like for you being able to sort of have sort of that, that those open boundaries to just draw, you know, the, the crazy stuff? No, it's great. Uh, I mean, uh, we were talking uh, before about that. Mm -hmm. um, having the chance, Harley is a mix of, of uh, as you said, box Bunny and, uh, but sometimes serious. Mm -hmm. So you could play, uh, the, the range to, to draw is uh, really, Mm. whenever you want to draw, so it's great. Has there been a moment where you've gotten a script page from Sam and be like, I, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll do this. We'll get on this ride. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Until now, every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is our first time meeting. Oh, we just met yeah, the first time yeah. a couple hours ago. Oh, geez. Yeah, exactly, because mm. I'm in Los Angeles. He's in Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. But uh, already, uh, we've, we've changed the course of Harley Quinn just through talking to each other. <laughs> Over some croissants, uh, back back by the marina. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, um, do you have a, a set vision for what you want to accomplish with Harley? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and it goes back to what John was just saying. Harley is, is funny, and she's zany, and she's cartoony. She's over the top. She's violent. But she also has an emotional core to her, an emotional core that's really grounded in her real life experiences. She's a survivor. She's a survivor of so much in her life and that powers her ability to get through these crazy situations. She really has this dichotomy between the cartoony and the emotional and you don't get that in a lot of books. You don't get that in a lot of characters. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes just one or the other. And to be able to play in, in, in both of those veins and both of those themes and both of those kind of situations and environments and characters, mm -hmm. uh, it's a real unique opportunity that we're, we're, we're really going to seize on. How do you sort of walk the fine line, and this could be a question for you as well, between the, the zany and the violence and the seriousness? Like, especially, you know, with Harley, you mentioned that you know, there's a lot more to her than just sort of that and more so, than just the butt jokes right I mean, we all love butt jokes right but right. there's a lot more than just the butt jokes right yeah yeah uh, we talked about that uh, earlier that um on the artistic were you side, spying on our uh, our breakfast conversation just trying this is exactly yeah, what we're exactly. talking about yeah <laughs> uh, hardly I, I try to to work here uh, as light as i can without being really really cartoony just to keep the violence in right. check uh not, if I try to go too realistic, mm -hmm. it will be really heavy. Uh, so Some of the things she does, especially the violence, we couldn't get away with if it wasn't also for the cartoony aspect of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It goes right. back to Bugs Bunny. Bugs mm -hmm. Bunny can get away with a lot. It would be rated R mm -hmm. if it was uh, Bruce Willis doing it. Right. So uh, it, we can use the cartoony to get away with things that you can't get away with exactly. in any other DC book. But to be able to play that off against the, the, the more emotional themes, the, thing, the things that she feels, the things that she goes through, mm. her emotional motivation for going to Apocalypse, her emotional motivation for doing crazy things to Granny Goodness, you know, mm. like uh, to be able to, to give the audience a one-two punch, I think is uh, it's really effective 
because you don't know that these things are coming and you're not ready for it. Harley's a character that's also sort of transcended a ton of different types of media. Oh, yeah. Right? And so now, mm -hmm. you know, ever since the Suicide Squad movie, she's been put on an even bigger, you know, stage. Yeah. Do you ever find yourself trying to uh, not necessarily, you know, cater to a, a, that wider audience that may be experiencing Harley for the first time, but trying to sort of make the connection of, you know, some of the stuff that they may have seen there with some of the stuff that you're trying to do? with the book. It's interesting because I, I'm not intimidated by that at all because really what that means is you, you have like Harley from the animated series, you have her early comic book appearances, you have uh, the Arkham Asylum video game, right. you have yep, the Suicide exactly. Squad movie, you have Jimmy and Amanda's Amazing Word. These are all super talented creators who have taken a look at Harley and said, what is the core of this character? Mm -hmm. What about this character is irreplaceable? Right. What about this character do we have to preserve when we bring her into a super dark setting like Arkham Asylum? Uh, and I'm really just cribbing off their work. <laughs> they've already made, they've already figured it out, right. right? So as long as you have that idea, as long as you have that key, that core, there's so much that you can do. There's so many places you can mm -hmm. go as long as you protect what that character is really about. Nice, cool. All right, uh, I'm going to ask you two more quick questions. Uh, what, one of the things that you've got going on in the book is uh, comics play a huge role in Harley yes. Quinn. Yes. And there's you know someone obviously needs to be to be make, making those. Yes. What's the deal with that? Uh, well, we've seen uh, a couple pages of comics inside the Harley comic. These are comic books about Harley. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, it's, it's like who, it, who in the DC universe is making a comic book about Harley? We've just seen their name so far. Their name is M. Clatterbuck. And they are the most mysterious comic book creator uh, we've ever encountered uh, in DC or the DCU. Uh, I mean, you've probably got a lot of DC writers and artists coming through this room, right? Mm -hmm. I think you need to ask them if they're the real M. Clatterbuck. Nice. But this is a mystery that we are All building right. up until issue 50, which is our giant-sized anniversary art jam spectacular mm -hmm. where Harley Quinn destroys the DC universe continuity. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. You've also, you know, had a fairly nice big announcement this weekend yes. with Comixology. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Uh, I launched my new creator-owned book with uh, artist and my co-creator, Alti Furman Sai. It's called Goliath Girls, and it's available immediately. It's our, announced oh, nice. and available immediately on uh, Comixology and Amazon Kindle. Sweet, awesome. Yeah. Well guys, thank you so much for taking the time to stop by. Thanks, man. For more on DC Comics and all the uh, crazy coverage we're doing at San Diego Comic-Con 2018, make sure to keep it locked in at comicbook.com. <laughs>